All right, hello, hello, hello. I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, the Top Notch Gamer, aka the Top Notch Gamer. And today on Let's Gay Final Fantasy VI, we have Alexis Dissel Cohen. Thanks so much for being on the show. Yay, thanks for having me. Uh, we are coming up on the very end of this game, which has um, been, uh, which is, is exhilarating and exciting. What have you been uh, up to this past week? I, you know, working, trying to do the art stuff, you know, doing the mom stuff. The mom the, stuff is big. Yeah, the you mom have stuff a, is big. You have a I, child that I, you've produced? I did produce him 12 years ago. Wow. 12.5 years ago. And yeah. what's his name? His name's Lemuel John Disilcoen Ignacio. Oh, that's a long name. It's a really long name. Poor kid. That's cute, though. <laughs> I have a... I'm John Gibson Martin the third. is my full name. Oh, so really? That's... He's the third too, but he we didn't name him exactly the same, so, so he can't yeah. be the third officially. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, what's he getting into right now? What grade is he in? What's his big... He's in seventh thing? grade, and he just started gaming himself. So, I don't know what games he plays. I mean, it's been but... a couple of years, hasn't it? It's Minecraft he was playing when oh, I... Oh, he's doing Minecraft, yeah. And he's moved on to the social aspect of things. Like, you know, like we're doing this live, but he's really obsessed with talking to people over the internet while they're playing games. Yeah. That's a thing, I guess. Yeah, on Twitch <laughs> and uh, on many many of the uh, many of this things themselves, you can, you can get some of that stuff going. Yeah. Uh... And, uh, w but you don't even know what games they are. No. <laughs> but he's in seventh grade, so you're kind of at the point where you don't have to maybe worry as much about, like, him being scarred for life by some... No, but I, you know, <sighs> uh, the computer games to me have so far been t quite tame. It's the ones that are for his console that have, like, the b blood, guts, and glory that I'm sure. a more sensitive yeah, about. Yeah, that's so, scary stuff. Yeah, and I make him play so I can, like, look at the screen anytime. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm kind of one of those moms. That's... I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I look to see what he's doing. Is he allowed to see PG-13 films? Oh, yeah, he sees him rated R. I'm not, like... If it's, uh, you know, kind of bloody, I don't really care. In language, I don't really care about Sure. It. Yeah. Sure. You know. I hear you. So. Can you read to me the, f like, give me two sentences out of there. Okay. As you descend into Kefka's Tower, you'll be forced to create three groups. Um, as the first part. Did that. As the first part, you did that. Yeah. Go across. After the nine. Uh, oh, no, no. I haven't done that. As the first part, go across the conveyor belt and then over to the upper, upper right, right corner. corner. Well, you'll find a crow coronet inside okay. a treasure chest. Okay, I did that. Then what next? Okay, and then after that, go through the tube to your left. All right, going through the tube. Continue down the conveyor belt and through the door at the bottom. All right, going down the conveyor belt. The chest in here contains fixed dice. Okay, got that. Okay. Uh, further down, you go back outside again. All right. Through the tube here, you'll find yourself nowhere to go. It's time to switch to the second party. Here's this tube. And yes, I have nowhere to go. So I'll switch with shift. Okay. And then head downstairs and through the tube. Oh, this guy's real slow. Head down the stairs and through the tube. At the upper left corner of this area for a chest containing Minerva. Okay, let's just wait a second because now I have to fight a monster, of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, so you're so so you're not one of those because I just remember like being in eighth grade and we were on a school trip to Colonial Williamsburg. And we watched the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze Ooh, on the bus. That's like too sexy. It, yeah, it, yes. Also, um, th there was definitely that feeling about it, I think. And also, though, there was a boy on the bus, I remember, who he, you know, he had a kind of a helicopter mom who had never let him watch PG 13 movies. So no. it was the first PG 13 movie he ever saw. And he was like, Wow, like he he was just like so excited. Like he thought he was like the coolest person in school for getting to watch Ghosts with Patrick Swayze, which at that point was like, you know, twenty five years old. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> That's hilarious. So he was it was just kinda goofy. And then also I remember like a lot of the kids growing up whose parents would like only let them watch PBS, they were always like the most 
physically aggressive, violent little boys. That's oh, another weird so. memory I have. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's any correlation between anything with that, but that's just was my experience with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's got to be hard as a parent to to gauge when it's okay to. You know, I'm not a big freaker out about things. Like, Lemmy and I have always, uh, you know, we're very close. And I've always, always had a 100% open policy with him. Like, he can ask me anything, and then if he sees something, we discuss it. I think there's an issue and a problem, and I think it spans across, even with adults. Like, if something happens and you don't discuss it, and you're... Like me, growing up, we would see something, my mom would say something, something would happen, and we never discussed it. I didn't know what the hell was going on, you know what I mean? But him, if Can you, you give me an example? Like, uh, if you see something scary in a movie, or you hear, um, you hear um, something on the radio, and you ask your parents, and they, like, downplay it, like, you know, like, what is sex, or, you know, I can't think of a specific example, but, like, you know... Um, or talking about death or something. I think a lot of parents with their kids uh, skim over things that they just don't want to talk about. Sure. You know? And so I've never had that policy true. with Lemmy. I'm yeah, like, you always talk about it. Yeah. Now, uh, what are your parents... Let's talk about your parents. What... Uh, you, you're already... I'm already pushing some buttons. Just bringing them up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I just turned 35 years old. Uh-huh. And I think as I'm getting older, I'm having... You know, you just realize more how and how your upbringing uh, truly has affected your outcome in life. And uh, I'm basically having some mommy issues right now, so. Okay. <laughs> Around what? Uh, you know, I prefer not to get okay. too into it. Well, but like, well. Like, like. I'm the middle child, so okay. I've always been very much like, hey, I see your point of view, and I see your point of view. Like, let's meet in the middle. I'm the peacemaker, right? Sure. So I've always been super uh, giving with my mom or, you know, growing up for situations, whatever it is. And uh, meaning I don't hold grudges. It's super hard for me to hold a grudge. Yeah. It's really hard. I just get over things really quickly. Sure. But, you know, as I get older, I'm like, oh, why do I let these things go? That's kind of mean or bad, and why are you doing that? Okay. Anyway. Okay, so I got the Minerva. You'll find two doors at the bottom. Go through the upper door and open the chest for attack star. Okay, that's what we're going to do. All right. Do you so, consider this cheating? No, because these videos are sort of to uh, exist to maybe help other people figure out how to play a, it a little bit. So I I I sort of categorize it as that. Um, um and also I feel like yeah. Okay, wait, so I got the tax star, then what? Go through the upper door and open the chest. Okay, then head down through the other, other door. Okay, well, we'll see what that is and in then a says, second. Okay. Well, one story that I remember very vividly you telling me was you had some friend over and your mom wanted you guys to do some, I think it was some yard work or just something to help out around the house. And at the end, she was like, and at the end, I've got a special treat for you. Oh, yeah, that was my mom, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, at the end, the treat was raisins. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, yay, raisins! <laughs> and the other kid was like, raisins. <laughs> which I I will admit, I would have been the other kid, which is so spoiled to be that to be that kid, honestly. Yeah, we were pretty poor growing up, so we never got, like, prepackaged fun things like even our cereal was like if you ever look at the cereal aisle and you go down to the bottom and it's like near the floor and they're gigantic bags yeah those are what we had like so the like off-brand fake things yeah we, we definitely lived off puff rice cereal and like sure <laughs> yeah so we didn't really get you know get the lucky charms the cookie crisp yeah or like Oreos or any like packaged cookie that would sure. that would have been really fun to have, but we didn't have those. Didn't get to get those. <laughs> well, it, you didn't really miss out on that much. It's funny, like I had a friend who never was allowed to have cookie crisp as a child, and then, and then as an adult, they went and bought it for themselves. Yeah. And uh, and like, that what well, didn't satisfy. But the thing is, maybe it would have satisfied then, when they were a child, but now the, yeah. the moment has passed. I never say no, like, if he, like, it's the end of the semester, so I might be crazy and let him get a box of Lucky Charms for the break. Yeah. Maybe. 
just because you know he worked hard this semester. Yeah. So he can get he can get you know he can get a fun box. Of if he gets good grades, he can get he can get the good the good cereal. Yeah. That's good. I think it's a good trade off. Okay, I'm going back. Okay, okay. So there's another door down here. All right. So I went through that door. And then it says Atma waits in his room. If you're going to fight him, just approach him and hit X. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Now, uh, now you said you grew up poor. What did your parents do for a living, or what? What's the what was the situation there? Oh, they were. So this is a fun story. My mom was a head cheerleader. And my dad was the captain of the football team. Oh, so they were the most popular kids in school to start. Yes. And they went to a small uh, Christian private high school over here. Oh, boy. Uh, called, what was it called? Um, it's, Ar it's in Arcadia. It's right here. Sure. Uh, my mom grew up in Pasadena. Uh-huh. And um, I can't think of the name. Anyways. And so... What ends up happening in a lot of those situations is they graduate and they get married and start having babies when they're like 19. So, it was bad. It was bad news. Yeah, that you would say that's not a good decision. For I would say to that make. was like really not a good decision. It's all like, right. You know, like let's not go to college and make all these babies and then what do you do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, anyways, that didn't work out between them. But um, they, they broke up. They got a divorce. Oh, yeah. So, then my mom. Put herself through school with four kids. I'm very proud of her. She got her MBA, and then she became a saleswoman for the Yellow Pages. Do you remember Yellow Pages? I do. Yeah, she worked for the Yellow Pages. For I a remember. Really long time. I remember always looking in the Yellow Pages to find video game stores. They are toilets. <laughs> they are heavy metal industrial post steampunk <laughs> toilets that we're witnessing in this game we recently did a did a steampunk event at the space i work out downtown and i had to look up what a steampunk is does that make me totally lame no like, because steampunks steampunk? are totally lame in fact when i talk about this game which has specifically one character that's very very <laughs> steampunk i i I, I refer to this game as industrial fantasy okay. instead of steampunk instead of because steampunk. steampunk has become so absurd yeah they're, they're pretty young kids. Like, I, you know, are, are you experiencing this now? Like, you meet you meet younger people and you're like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there at least with the video games. Comic books, I've managed to stay on top of that. But uh, video yeah. games definitely don't always know what the kids are into. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so read me really quick because I think this lion boss. is Atma. I'm going to fight him right now. Okay, it's a difficult... Uh, boss, essentially, since you probably aren't using your profession preferred party. Sure. Uh, for me, the best source of damage came from Edgar with the Genji glove and offering combo. Oh, the okay, Atma weapon. The Atma weapon did a lot of damage with each hit, but don't equip him with the greatest, otherwise it will heal Atma. Okay, I don't oh. even think that's a situation that I could be getting myself into. So Other that's good. big time sources of damage are, of course, the Bum Rush and surprisingly, Strago's Grand Train Lore did over 4,000 damage for me. All right. Oh, Southern Cross. What the heck is this attack about to be? Do the, do the monsters keep getting bigger? Uh, well, this one's a boss, so it's inevitably going to be a real pain oh. to deal with. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to do magic. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I definitely am experiencing that a little bit. But what is a space downtown that's doing steampunk events that you're involved with? That's what oh. I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, have you ever met Pete Galindo? He's like... Um, Samir Yamin grad school. Anyways, I met him through her. Uh, he just has a production studio downtown and he needed a manager, so I quit Bloom because I went to New York. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I went to New York for a month this summer. That's fun. Um, because a uh, nonprofit paid me as a uh, person to come and help with their admin for the for the summer. For the mm -hmm. summer program, which is awesome, I really want to work there. It's uh, yeah. it's called um, Talent Agency Teen Portfolio Prep. So they help kids from the city get into art schools with like money. Like they help them, um, you know, so that they have professor and college level portfolio prep classes. Wow. Because um, a lot of the kids don't even have art in school. It sucks. That is a shame. So it's like at risk kids. So they get them in college with art, which I, you know, obviously. I like that. Yeah, how and could you so, not? And uh, so, I went in the summer. I quit Bloom and I went in the summer in the hopes that perhaps it would turn to a long-term thing. And of course, life never works out the way that you want it to. So, I'm back. 
and I needed a job. And Pete said, hey, we're looking for a studio manager. So we do events and productions and stuff. It's not really my thing, but it gets by, you know. Mm-hmm. Helps me. Helps me get by. And I don't have to be there during the middle of the day when um, there's not a gig happening. So Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Now, uh, and you're an artist yourself. Let's not forget that. I am an artist. I have to remind myself sometimes. Let's talk about some of your uh, some of your work. Okay. Some of your pivotal works. Because I've definitely seen some art you've done, and I've done some projects with you. Yeah. But I feel like I... I, uh, I uh, my The performance that I remember most vividly was one you did at the Eternal Telethon with a friend. And you were dressed up in this sort of... Um, I think he looked very Egyptian. Oh, that was... Wasn't it near Halloween or something? Could have been. Yeah, and so he was dressed up to go to a party because he's kind of like a party guy. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, you want to do his performance? Name? His name was Aaron Valenzuela. Or is Aaron Valenzuela. Okay. I haven't talked to him for a few years. Oh, yeah, yeah. We would take... He... Um, so we both use a lot of fabric in our work. That's right. We went to school together. But he used fabric because of fashion. And I use fabric because it's like utilitarian. It's like a, just like a material that you could use to build like big things that do- doesn't cost a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we would wrap ourselves in the fabric. And then we'd use the weight of our bodies it was, it was just like we would wrap ourselves in fabric. <laughs> you wrap yourselves in fabric, but then you would lean back yeah, it was in this cool. way. It would like kind of create a netting where we could use our bodies to, to prop lean. each other up yes. and you could lean back all really far and yeah. you would still be standing up because yeah. you were balancing each other out in this way. But then it sort yeah. of got a little bit um, yeah. uh, scary or pa- maybe painful. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I remember about that was um, during that performance, I was a little drunk. Yeah. And it was, I thought it was very, there's something very romantic about it. <laughs> uh, you know, these two people being sort of connected and f- sort of falling away from each other, but pushed together oh, in this that's way. nice. And so I messaged my boyfriend, or I said, I told my boyfriend I, I was drunk. I think I told my boyfriend at the time that I loved him for like the first time, like the <laughs> I love you Oh, that's like thing. so nice. And I was drunk. Uh, but I think I did it, like, over, like, either text message or maybe even in the Eternal Telethon chat room. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the Eternal Telethon is, maybe you want to give a it's quick bio a, on that. Well, it's an ongoing um, performance, or, you know, I should say art event that helps raise money for a retirement home for artists. And so, um, you know, it's streamed online so they've had a few different ones over the years and the particular one you're talking about was a 24-hour uh, one hosted at uh, Machine Projects in Echo Park um, yeah that's basically that's yeah the well so but and there's a chat room that people can watch the telethon and, and chat with each other oh, yeah, yeah. during and so uh, during that it was I think in that venue where I told my boyfriend I loved him but I don't think he's he said it back later, but I don't think he said it back then, so it was like a little oh, awkward. Oh, man. Oh, that's funny. That's nice. You never told me that story before. Yeah. But yeah, so I did like performance, like only performance for about 10 years there. I was I was getting pretty heavy on the performance. Thing. Yeah. And then I went to grad school and I got into installation stuff, but still all interactive. So anything I ever do, it's like you could touch it or do something or go through it or you need another person to navigate it or something. Yes. And, yes. Uh, I'm into that. And then uh, recently I performed at the Red Cat with Lemmy. Oh, that's fun. Did you see those photos? No, I haven't seen those photos. Yeah, here, sure. Um, Feel free to open up a new window. Uh, I'm very proud of this because I just think it looks cool. Um, and then... Um, okay, some movement maybe we're getting into. Yeah, we did like poses. So... Uh, I was I proposed this for like the last, you know, two or three years. You, you know how they had the open call for the performances at the Red Cat? Oh, I did not know that they did. You should do it. Um, you just get on their uh, email and then they'll email you when there's an open call. It's like once a year? It's um, twice a year. They call them studios. So they, they pick like five or six um, performances and Great. they perform in one evening. So sure. I was proposing this for years. Because what I wanted to do was I wanted to go in between each of the performers. So I wanted to go like, 
between the first and the second and between the second and the third. Sure. And they weren't really into that. So I had to wait until one of the curators I knew. And then I was like, hey, can you tell them I really want to do this project? So finally they let me do this project. So what ends up happening is, you know, the first performance goes, it turns black on stage, like they turn off the lights. And then Lemmy and I come out and lay on the stage for a minute in a pose. Yeah. So this is like the first pose. Yeah. And then the the second performance goes, and then it turns black, and then we come on the stage. And they're wearing all black, and then so you just hold the pose for a minute. And then they turn off the spotlight, and then we exit the stage. And you're sort of intertwined. Your bodies are are touching in all these poses. Yeah. That I'm looking at. Yeah. So those are the different poses. Wow, that's cool. Now, what did fun. what did Lemmy think about this, or how did he become involved? Well, Lemmy and I have... Oh, go. Oh, sorry. If you want to show me more projects... No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Um, We are... uh, All right. Uh, Oh, now I don't know where we are. I think I just got the force... Okay, right here. Go through. Go through the tube. Open the chest for a ribbon. Oh, wait. Okay, force armor. Wait, where did I... Did I come from there? Oh, boy. Um, you have to fight him again? Oh, no. You have to, you're have you just constantly just dealing with a barrage of monsters throughout this entire I'm game. I'm into that green one with the big teeth. Yes, that's called a Marlboro. It, uh, it's a poisonous. Like a cigarette? Yeah, I think maybe that's where they got the name from. Or maybe... <laughs> or I think it must have been because the Marlboro, Marlboro, Marlboro is a poisonous monster. And uh, the, oh. that um, cigarettes are, of course, poisonous. <laughs> They're not good for you. So um, you got the floor shield. I think I did. Go down through this tube. Down the escalator is your tube and a door. Go through neither and head to the lower left where you'll find a chest containing forced armor. You did that. Uh, no. Okay. Go Okay. Go through the tube. Open the chest for a ribbon. I think I'm about to do that. But I got the force armor. Okay. Yeah. Got okay, you got the force armor. armor. All right, just a second here. Let's yeah. see if this is this is the one. Yeah, there it is. Go to the tube, open the chest for a ribbon. Okay, okay then what's next? Step on the switch and change back to your first party. Okay, stepping on the switch. Not them. This one. Oh, she's okay. fast. Head down past the broken cylinders and up to the door on the right. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I think switch back to number two. Um, no, 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 wait. On the right. After another couple of rooms, this is pre- this party is stuck again. Switch to number two. Okay, so we gotta just keep going through these all these rooms here. Yeah, okay. I think that's the stuck moment. Switch back to party number two. Mm-hmm. All right. And then leave this room and go into the door to the right. Leave this room, go into the door to the right. There's the right. You now have the option of fighting the gold dragon if you wish. It's still an option, remember. All right, we're definitely gonna fight him. Uh, that's a quote. Uh, so, so yeah, so tell me, tell so me Lemmy's. I'm going to show you where that came from, which okay. is, I have been doing an ongoing project, which I don't think I have the photos on here. So I have an ongoing project with Lemmy ever since he was born. Okay. Um, I don't have so many photos because it's one of those things I have to remember to take the photo, but I lay, so whenever we're at like a big art, um, installation, like a big public art thing, like for example, in Chicago, the big bean, what's it called? Who's that artist? And they made that big shiny. And you stand under it. So I lay on the ground and then I lay Lemmy on top of me and it's sort of a way to like measure his body compared to mine. So I have this vision, like there's going to be a certain point that I'm laying underneath him and he's going to be like smothering me with his body. Cause he'll be so big. He'll be so big. I got gotcha. uh, And so that's sort of where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was the last performance I did. So he's always, he just, he's, just, he's, he's just indoctrinated like, since birth. Yeah, I mean, poor kid. His mom's he has an a body artist. body memory. Yeah. His mom is, uh, you know, performance artist. So he's just used to be kind of doing weird things all the time. Well, like, it's not, know. it could be worse. You know, you're not taking him to the auditions. He's, he's not on the uh, new season of Fuller House or oh, I'm totally kids say the. Because I grew up in LA and I know lots of people. And even when I was little, um, I absolutely hated it. My mom took us to acting classes and my brother was on a couple commercials and we had like headshots and stuff when we were kids. Oh, wow. And, um, I have definite feelings about the whole thing. I, I feel like 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's a certain socioeconomic class that does this. It's not like... Which class is that? You know, lower, lower income. The lower income people try to see if they can get their, their kids They can on. get their kids on yeah. Star Search. Yeah, or they, you know, people that tend to think that, like, Hollywood is the most amazing, cool thing ever. Um, yeah. Which isn't really the super rich people in LA, I think, I feel like. I don't know, I'm just making a generalization. I don't know, I don't have any stats on that, but that's just my experience growing, growing up in LA. So my mom took us to these acting classes. And um, I have always been a super rebellious child. Like I hated, and I've always hated anybody telling me what to do. Like just don't do it. Don't, don't tell me what to do. Tell Alexis what to <laughs> you do. You can ask me to do something, but don't tell me what to do. So like, for example, this these the director who's like teaching the class, the teacher class, we practice commercials, like trying out for a commercial. Like, okay, so for a cereal commercial. You have to enter from off the stage, sit down, look into the cereal box and go, yay, or whatever. And so you have to do this repeatedly. And what five-year-old or six-year-old wants to repeatedly come on and off the stage and then have the director off stage go, smile now. Now don't smile. Now put the box down. Yeah. Now look up. Now smile. <laughs> And I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. At five. <laughs> yeah, I think I was probably five or six. It's one of my first memories. That's you know, funny. Having this old lady telling me constantly what to do with these boxes, and I was like, Mom, I'm not. This is. I'm not doing this anymore. And so, did she give up on give up on it? She gave up on it with me, but my and brother. Did you try again? Yeah, <laughs> she was my brother. Okay, the gold dragon. You got oh, we're it? fighting him. We're getting into it. Okay. I think we are. Yeah, here we go. What does it say to do? Like most of the other dragons, this one follows an easy to predict pattern. Gold being lightning in this case means coming into battle, blah, 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 blah. Bum rush. Always use a bum rush. All right. That's that's easy to do. I can do that easily. He's more green than gold. Yeah, I see. Which is, that's true. Are we all going to die now? Let's, let's, oh, it wasn't even that good. This dragon is a pushover. It also looks like a brontosaurus, not a dragon to <laughs> It me. totally looks like a brontosaurus. Do you think brontosauruses maybe are not real? That's something that I, that's, I've heard recently. What do you mean? They like stuck other bones from other things to make it look real? It was something like where, um, yeah, it was something like that where, um, like it turned out that, it turned out that it was just a brachiosaurus, but they didn't find the, the crest, hmm. you know? Oh, that's weird. So, so that's, that is weird. That is very weird. Did you see that, um, dinosaur they found trapped in amber and it has a Feathers. feathered. Isn't that cool? It's, it's amazing. Dinosaurs are We know so crazy. little. Okay, so I beat the gold dragon. So continue up and you'll eventually be led to a switch in the upper corner. Continuing up. Switch. In the upper, oh yeah, I see we gotta Just go stand through. on the switch for now and switch to group three. All right, stand on the switch. Gotta fight these ninjas. Ooh, she so looks like a vixen. We've got a spicy lady. <laughs> um, what else is new? I like how they illustrate like people that you fight versus you. Like you're these diminutive little creatures, yeah, little you're people, tiny. and then the villains are always like fully formed, muscular. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, objects. So what does this say about life? What are uh, you trying to say? I mean, I think it was probably more just the <laughs> limitations on the graphics. Because they wa I guess they wanted the, the characters you play as to look the same inside and outside of this little, like, battle moment. But uh, I think I think it does create a certain, like, we're the little guy type of a uh, You know, like, type you, of you a can mentality. overcome, you could do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something of that is is in the content here, absolutely. Yeah. Look at Marcos. Look at that haircut. I know. He looks so different here, but... <laughs> I didn't even recognize him when he was in his battle scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think I named these characters after people we know more based on their personalities than their, their looks. <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be Marcos? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I named all these characters after my friends. That definitely... <laughs> Is uh, <laughs> is definitely what's going on. You probably recognize well, Adri Adro. You might know Adrian, mm -hmm. our friend Adrian. Uh, so uh, so um, what else uh, what else have you got going on? Uh, any other art projects recently? 
Um, just to apply to a few things. Um, Grants. Um, art residency in Chinatown uh -huh. at Automata. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was. I forget. It's like there's like a county performance based practice uh, research okay. institute. I don't know what it's called. The official. I just made that up. But and they're doing it with them. So next year they're having a set of performances. So I applied to that. Um, oh, I currently have. Um, if anyone takes the metro or the bus in Northeast Los Angeles right now, um, please look out for my poster because I have. I'm the metro poster artist for the neighborhood of Eagle Rock. And so the artwork is actually up now that you can see if you take the bus or the train. Wow. And then on January 27th, we're doing a poster signing, which I've never done anything like that. And I think it's a little cheesy, but... So I'm going to go to the farmer's market. Which farmer's market? In Eagle Rock, 5 to 7 p.m. Oh, yeah. Uh, January 27th, and you can come get a poster uh, of the artwork. And I think it's all for free, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's cool when they do stuff for free. You got the cape? I got the ca red cap. I got the red cap. And uh, now we are from the chest and go through. This path leads all the way up to two chests containing nutkin suit and gauntlet. Oh, I wish they had a graphic that showed what the, the nutkin, nutkin, the suit, nutkin looks? suit looks like. But I'm sure it, it won't have anything of the sort. Uh, what am I doing here? I've got these new guys on my side. Um... <laughs> So, so that's, that's exciting, but funny too. That's like a very, uh, cause Eagle Rock is like, how would you describe Eagle Rock? Um, cause I, I will admit right now that I actually do want, wish I lived there, but I also still think it's funny. Yeah. I actually know way too much about Eagle Rock because for this project, I don't really make, um, like flat work. So I had to really think of something. I was like, what the heck am I going to do? I can't paint a painting. Cause you know, most of the poster projects for the Metro, they're like, someone took a photograph or they painted a painting or something to represent the neighborhood. And I was like, I don't do that. So what am I going to do? Um, so I did all this research. Um, Eagle Rock is one of the oldest neighborhoods in LA. Sure. And it used to have the, um, the trolley cars. And you can get to downtown like in 15 minutes. Wow. It's crazy. Um, they go up and down Eagle Rock Boulevard and across Colorado. Um, and uh, today, Eagle Rock is one of the most diverse neighborhoods in all of Los Angeles. Like, it's, it's like LA is extremely diverse, but Eagle Rock is a neighborhood that's extremely diverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, the elementary school is extremely diverse. Let me went there. Um, and uh, a lot of, it's very. Over the years, particularly the last 15 years, um, gentrification in terms of, um, you know, people moving in, buying houses, and sort of fixing Oh, that I could and, never afford know. to live there, sadly, yeah. is, the, is the truth. Um, and a lot of people in the industry work there, meaning Hollywood industry, like a they lot of They live the, there. Yeah, but more like the camera operators and the right, yeah, like I've got, I've definitely, techie kind of get that vibe, people. Yeah. Not the producers or the directors and stuff. Like, they live in Hollywood. They live in Beverly Hills. Yeah, but a lot of Which the... went for Trump. <laughs> oh, yay! Yay! Let's not even I go I was so there. surprised that, uh, that Beverly Hills, you'd think the bastion of Hollywood elite liberalism would have gone... Well, that's how I pictured it, but I was dead wrong. I've, I've learned. I don't know. People with money. They love other people with money, I feel like. Yeah. It's a very insular... Um, world i think when you have money and i think yeah. money also makes you forget um what it's what it's like to to not have money or to relate to people who oh for sure like you have no yeah no way to relate to it yeah if, especially if you've always had it or you've never really had you know to worry about that type of thing yeah in your life uh, it's, uh, yeah it's, it's brutal so eagle rock is uh it's a funny, cool place, you know. They have some, lots of like, now there's like ton of restaurants and bars. Yeah. And I like it. It's quiet. You can see kind of the mountain right there. It's kind of nice. I like it because the comic book store that I uh, I work for is there. Oh, cool. So shout out to Comics vs. Toys, my favorite comic book store <laughs> in the world. I like Eagle Rock because it's not really trying that hard to be cool. 
That's kind of why I like it. I feel like there's some, because I worked in Eagle Rock for, for five years. Oh, yeah, you did. And so I feel like some people really, really want Eagle Rock to be super cool. But then you have all the old school people, like it, like a lot of the uh, older families, like Latino and, and uh, Filipino families, like they do not care at all. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, do you want to talk about that work experience? No. No. Okay. <laughs> we can if you want. It was. It. It was what it was. Yeah. Well, I worked there. I worked oh, yeah. there too. Uh huh. That was fun. That was fun. Uh, Johnny would answer the phones, and he was yeah. so polite. You, you can be such a nice gentleman. I know. I, I. Well, I really like. This is the thing that I think have. I mean, first of all, I just want to say that I did get fired from that job, so I wasn't that good at it. Let's be honest. <laughs> because, and I quote. You have to do a lot of things at this job. You do. You can't just you can't just sit there and mind the front desk. You have to fi- do. There's always these little jobs that I would never do. But in terms of talking to the other people, you were excellent. I was good, and I I also did that at another um, place uh, for. I was the front desk at Callards for many years, and I realized the trick to talking to people in these environments is you have to be ready are prepared to talk about basically three separate topics. The first is family drama. That's really not that big of a deal, but but people think it's a big deal that are talking to you about it. It's not a big deal it. to you. It's not a big deal to me, but it's it's <laughs> it's a big deal to them. And I just have to respect that and believe that in a way. Yeah, yeah. The second is birth. I have to be ready to talk about pregnancy and and kids and stuff like that. Really? And the third is um little tiny little dogs. <laughs> which which I'm set I'm set on I love tiny little dogs so with those three in hand yeah. I can I can conquer any um, any uh, any front desk environment yeah see I kind of like hate talking about kids and pregnancy I don't hate it I just feel like I'm talked out about it I'm done well yeah. you've done it I never will yeah I've, I'm <laughs> done so it will always be a, it will always be a great mystery to me. And at Eagle Rock, too, so Lemmy went to, this is an interesting thing, Lemmy went to, uh, not to keep talking about kids, but just like socioeconomics of Eagle Rock, he went yeah. to the Montessori preschool, mm-hmm. and I was the youngest mom there probably by 10 to 15 years, at least. There was probably some moms that are 20 years older than me, and so it was a very interesting, obviously I had no, uh, not a lot in common with yeah. these career women. Yeah. You know, having their babies at 40 plus, you know. Yeah. Um, life. Where are you now? I am not sure. Okay. I, I return back to the main opening, continue downward. There's a door at the bottom that leads to a more mechanical room. I think I just entered that. Did you grab the hero ring? Yeah, but I don't see the hero ring. That's the problem. Uh-oh. So that's why I'm a little perplexed. I'm a little confused. But we're, right now we're fighting brontosauruses again, so that's all that really. <laughs> that's what we got to focus on here. <laughs> Is that the Inferno? No. No. We're not to that thing yet. Okay. I'm just going to assume that I'm just supposed to go through here and this is where the thing that they're talking about is. Hero's Ring. Okay. We got the Hero's Ring from the chest and notice the generator thing below you. There's an invisible path dealing straight down below it. Down, left, down, and right. You will get you to it. Down, left, down. Down, left, down, and right. Okay, to it. Inside is an Aegis shield. Oh, weird. Now I now I feel very blocked in. Oh, boy. We're going to be wandering around in this for a little while. I can it's, only tell. It's, it just means... Invisible just means that it's black. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that I couldn't have known that there was that, that entryway at that point. Uh... Butters is in my lap right now. Butters is you have a dog super right now. Super cute. Yep, I have uh, Miss Mellow. Uh huh. Um, and she's super cute. She's. I have to take her to her vet appointment. Her couple year old vet appointment. Yeah. Uh, but she's her, kind of like her really, physical. Her physical, but she's really soft. Like you see how soft his fur is. Yeah. It's like super healthy fur. Her fur is like that. But I feel like a lot of little dogs don't have that. It's more. It's hard. It's a. It's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see where I'm supposed to be here. Okay, maybe I'm doing it better now. I think I am. Or no. no. Down, left, down, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think we're getting there. We're getting somewhere here. Okay. Okay. Well, I've got to bring this guy back to life, though, is what i got to do. Okay. All right. Let me just see here. Mm-hmm. 
Don't die, please. Uh oh. Nobody died. Okay, good. <laughs> level five death means that people who are levels that are multiples of five will die, but since I guess none of my characters are, it's not working on any of them. Oh. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Come on, buddy. Uh, so. Uh, I love their dance. Very victorious. They're, it's their victory dance. If you if you could hear the music, you would hear that it was. Burr, 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 okay. burr, 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 burr. Nice. Uh, Inside is an Aegis shield. Go back to the main part of the room and ride the conveyor belt at the very top. Yeah, I will do that. Let's just let's do that. Okay, okay, we got that. Let me just make sure everyone's not about to die. We gotta heal you guys sometimes in this game. Um. Did you play video games at all as a child, or that was a big no-no? Um, we were, had very strict, like, I feel like a lot of my childhood was based upon, um, like, kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, and I'm sorry, I, I, it's not a judgment, but, like, sort of granola family, like, you know, like, but it's because my mom was old school kind of Mexican, yeah. and so we were not allowed under any circumstances to watch TV during the week. We only were allowed to watch it on Friday and Saturday. Uh-huh. And so, um... Because we lived on a budget with a lot of things, somebody gave us a, um, what are those old schools? Like Atari. The first, yes, we had an Atari. And we had the, like, we had the controller with the wheel that turns so you could do yeah. the Pong. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. So we had an Atari. That's pretty good. And then at one point we got one Game Boy and we played Mario Brothers and uh -huh. Tetris. But sure. that was basically it. Pretty good. And this is before computer online gaming was a big oh, thing. Oh, yeah. before, before computer gaming really much of anything was. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, but uh, it was like more for like really nerdy people because a lot of it was like completely text oriented. Well, you couldn't go online. I mean, like, there was no internet. Was That's what it was really it was before. Like it was like the internet kind yeah. of. Yeah. Um, and at some point, you were all also have worked for a Latina magazine, right? Oh, Mariposa Magazine. Yeah. Right now, it's online. Uh -huh. uh, well, it was shame. a magazine started by my mother, and she wow. it was like told inspirational stories of Latinas that overcame obstacles in their life. That's an important thing to have. Uh huh. And you know, it's more like a feel good kind of kind of. Story. So, so now let's talk about this. I don't know if you have a strong opinion on this, but uh, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I sense with Spanish and people saying Latina and Latino and Latinx. What are uh, your thoughts on all that? So my, it's just like any form of or category of identity. So you should probably, if someone asks you to identify them as a certain way, that you should respect that there you, you go know? um but personally i grew up with kind of an old school conservative mother so like hispanic is totally fine to use but people some people get offended by that but she's not offended by that so i grew up with hispanic and latino uh-huh and then i went to college and now i'm chicana so it's very confusing that's that was that yeah. was a more collegiate identity <laughs> yeah i like chicano because it 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 you know there's a whole theory behind it. But basically, essentially, it just means like you're a, of mixed heritage. Like even being Mexican, you're like Spanish and indigenous. That's and you right. Come to America, and then you have like this American version of being Mexican. So it's you know. It's yeah, funny. and and uh, I think a lot of people. I've definitely messed this up with a lot of the language because I, I I you know I think growing up for me, I grew up in New Jersey. There was not a big Chicano or L Latino population of any kind. Uh, and, uh, and so I just sort of identified Latin people as being just like a different kind of white person, like Italian or Irish or something like that. Yeah. Especially I think because, well, because I was uneducated on the issues, but also partially because, um, you know, where I was growing up, it was, there was still so much like, I don't know if you call it racism, but you know, Italian people would say they weren't white or, I mean, which I don't, I... 
how can I say this? Because there are some very dark-skinned Sicilian people in New Jersey. Yeah. And people definitely had not nice things to say about them, so... Well, the, well I mean, if you want to get into a whole history lesson on identity, which yeah. I'm not an expert, but I know enough about it, that, like, even the word white is a contentious word. Oh, a yeah. A lot of white people, it's like, they're not really... That's not how they identify. It's like you're like whatever German or European. But or culture whatever. identifies you that way, and it affects you. Yeah, I mean, somebody made up that word as an opposition to everybody else. Yeah, so like this is white and good, and everybody else is not white. You know what I mean? So that that yeah. that's that. But but being Hispanic is an ethnicity. So technically, you can be a white Hispanic. Or you can be a black Hispanic. That's or you right. You can be an indigenous Hispanic. Yeah. You can be an Asian Hispanic. Sure. You know, like the Filipinos. Like they're very, you know, the Spanish were there for 300 years. So, right. Yeah. And they, a lot of people from the Philippines have very Spanish uh, names. Mm hmm. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, I guess my point is that I was very miseducated on it. And then I sort of swung all the way to the other side where I said, oh, Latino people are not white. You know, um, I didn't see that nuance or I didn't get that nuance yet because, because, um, because I just, I wasn't educated on it. And then now I finally feel like I'm starting to understand it the way it's yeah. explained. But, but it seems like there isn't a, a lot of people from Mexico especially have the indigenous heritage as well, right? It's a very small, um. This is from all my Chicano studies in college when I discovered my Mexicanness. Um, the, there's a very small percentage of Mexicans that are actually only purely Spanish. Right. Basically, everybody in Mexico has some indigenous. Right. Heritage. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, and that is something that I didn't. I didn't really. I was never educated on growing up, and so, which is a which is wild, really, because yeah. it's such an erasure of indigenous peoples. Well, yeah. Well, it's interesting because Lucas is New Mexican, and his so basically he's all, from New Mexico he's in from the state. New Mexico, the state, and so basically New Mexico, the state was settled by Spanish ranchers. So actually, they never lived in Mexico. They just came from Spain and settled parts of the Southwest. But those Spanish ranchers were the first quote unquote Mexicans that the US government called Mexicans because of the language they were speaking. So it's very fucking confusing. It's really complicated <laughs> and I feel like we are not gonna solve it nope. on this video game podcast. No, but it's just, you know, it's, it's history, it's US history. And it's really important to talk about because because people need to know that have a have a more of an education than I think they do on some of the some of the history of of that stuff in this country. It's true. Well, Alexis, do you have anything uh, big uh, coming up that uh, that you'd like to plug? Um, nope. Just the come see me at the Eagle Rock Farmers Market on January twenty seventh. That's if you're right, around, January twenty for a poster signing. Poster signing of your art. Yeah. Uh, say again, what was on the what what are, what's on your poster? So, um, because I don't do painting and photography, I was struggling to figure out what to do. And so I had this idea to go around to every street corner and take a picture of every street sign in Eagle Rock. Yeah. So the poster is just a grid of street signs. Oh, that sounds so It's kind of fun cool. because I've seen kids go, oh, is my street on there? Or oh. Like people are like, look for their street, which is kind of fun. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun. So that's what it is. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Alexis. This is uh, Let's Gay. We're getting down to the wire here. Uh, only a few more bosses until the grand finale. Uh, I think there's a secret dungeon that I might try to do, but I, I, I don't know if I have time before the big final, final episode that I think is going to happen to Human Resources. Uh, or it could happen right here uh, in January. But thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you.